So I w I'm going to talk about a lot of gloomy stuff today. So I decided to come start with a positive note and show one of the clips that we have done. Uh, we write the music and words, so everything belongs to us. And we do the whole production and everyone is women, so no cis men allowed in our movement, basically. Uh, it's a very separatist movement and this is one of the pictures from our rallies, which is, it's very really hard to see participants because there's a lot of policemen there, it's basically excessive police forces that we usually face with. And, and also I would want to mention about it, not myself, or who that doesn't know. I'm a lawyer of feminist movement in Azerbaijan, so what I do is I send cases to European Court of Human Rights by feminist movement. So I don't really work on domestic violence cases, my main focus is LGBT cases and trans women especially, but regarding the movement, I work with members. So let's say um, if they have cases, if they are arrested for their political beliefs, if they were arrested in the rallies, if their profiles are hacked and etc., I take those kinds of cases and also I work with a lot of international organizations so we can get a lot of statements about the movement and uh, the violations we, we face. So a little bit about Azerbaijan. I put the uh, Freedom House Statistics, which is an um, organization mostly based on in America. And Azerbaijan is situated in Caucasus. It's considered Eastern Europe and it's very close to Middle East. We have neighbors Russia, Iran, which is very nice. Uh, we also have neighbors Georgia, Armenia, and a small border with Turkey. We also have the conflict with Armenia. So the place is situated, it's very active place politically, and there's a lot of things that are going on throughout the history. Azerbaijan had colonized by Russia like more than close to 200 years, first by Russian imperialism, then by Soviet Union. And right now, Azerbaijan is a dictatorship country, so it's not free as you could see. Um, it's worse than Russia, Turkey, and even Iran. It's the same as China, and very close to North Korea. Probably the only difference is we can leave the country, that's why I'm here. Uh, so, about the history of Azerbaijan and the presidents that we have, I would say that our president name is Ilham Aliyev, and before him it was his father. So after the independence, we mostly saw the Aliyev family. And also his father, who is Haider Aliyev, was a secretary of Azerbaijan in Soviet Union, which means like the president of Azerbaijan in Soviet Union, and also a KGB general. So that means that Azerbaijan still have close ties with Russia, and our president has a close uh, friendship with Putin as well, which also affects our politics, and it affects our relationship with Europe and the hawk the country is run. It's not free, the most, almost all rights are violated, it's really up to the groups. Uh, the most affected ones are LGBTs. It's in the last place on the LGBT index according to ILGA, which is a ILGA, it's a, it, they do, do a lot of indexes, so it's the last place in the, among the Council of Europe countries. So it's the worst on Russia and Turkey again for five years now. Azerbaijan is only, Azerbaijan ratified a lot of conventions and the, one of the most influential one, influential one, that is also influential in Sweden I would say, is European Convention on Human Rights, that has European Court of Human Rights, which as a lawyers we mostly use to get the justice, because in the local courts, all the local courts are influenced by the executive branch, which, um, which is linked to the president itself. And so it's very hard to get any kind of um, judgment in terms of, especially in terms of political rights, or like let's say the in, in cases of domestic violence cases or the LGBT rights. So we send a lot of cases to European Court of Human Rights. Also, human rights lawyers are there's a lot of obstacles against them. The, that can be the, we are disbarred from bar association. We are not accepted to the bar association. So it makes it very hard to actually represent cases. So overall. Um, and one of the things that feminist movement is known for is holding rallies. And in terms of rallies, uh, after about 2006, Azerbaijan government gave no permission to any rally. So there is none of them are permitted. So you can't have, you can't host or have or hold any rallies in Azerbaijan. Um, it will, it will face with excessive police forces, and which ends up with a lot of arrests, detentions, 
tortures, and etc. And the question is, why we have feminist movement? What's the problem that we want to touch upon as a feminist movement? There's a lot of news headlines. There's actually the, the more worse ones, which I didn't want to put, because it can make some people uncomfortable. These are more tolerables, let's say. Um, there's not enough statistics about domestic violence cases in Azerbaijan. The reason is that NGO sector in Azerbaijan is very restricted. You can't register any NGO and you can't go to the regions. So let's say I want to go to the region as an individual or the NGO or like any kind of work as any kind of organization, even as a Council of Europe. Like I came here, I'm in Azerbaijan because Azerbaijan is a member of Council of Europe and I want to hold something in the region. I have to get a permission from a mayor. If I want to have like some kind of small conference, I have to get a permission from the mayor. So it's very restricted, it's impossible to go to regions, it's impossible to collect statistics. So statistics are very limited and also comes from the government sources, which is not reliable for a lot of reasons. As you could see the cases here, um, the only domestic violence cases we can get are the ones that are reported by news or the ones that we feminist women, as a feminist woman, we receive. According to UNHCR, 43% uh, of the households uh, um, faces with domestic violence cases. Like there's a 43% in households, there's a domestic violence is happening, which is, in my opinion, is a very low number because, I mean, I lived in Azerbaijan. I just came here in August and I know from my friends, I know how the culture is shaped. And I know that there's a lot of actual domestic violence cases that are very silent and mostly people don't go to the police. There's not an established system. We have like neighboring countries like Georgia who has a special police forces for domestic violence cases, which we don't have it, which is a really good uh, example from the region. Um, the, the, we could see a lot of domestic violence cases, a lot of femicides, and also other Azerbaijani government uses sex tapes to influence the politicians like they target the woman they don't target the man let's say i'm a politician and i'm a man they target my daughter they target my wife so women are used for that also in terms of lgbt rights the the worst i would say that working on these cases the worst conditions are the when the trans women are faces and this is because this is a man who wants to be a woman and that actually creates a lot of problem in the in the in the society. Also, like the people from society is also in the police and etc. It's just a, it's a very problematic to be a woman that you face a lot of problems. There's sexual harassment, sparks debate that you could say it's one of the uh, MPs sexually harassed his secretary, and it was on the Zoom call, so he didn't know he was taped, uh, and then it was leaked to the internet as a result. And there is a lot of 14 years old in Ideva who committed suicide because of bullying. The bullying are a lot, like things that are not touched up at all. Um, as well as there is a lot of uh, people who are uh, blackmailed because of like Azerbaijan blogger Stad and France who is a man, and her, because of her sister, sister's blackmailed this intimate video. That what happened is the government sent spies to those women. And even in that case, the spy marries the woman, then sex tapes his wife, then just vanishes. So they have a lot of plans. They really sing through that. Um, and it's, it's very hard. They do try to use women as a weapon. And when you ask me about the traditions in Azerbaijan, it's when you go there, you see, you could see the people who are wearing European clothes, I mean, people are not that religious as you could expect. Um, it's because of the Soviet Union. It's one of the most atheistic countries. But there is a culture that remains still and that limits women's rights as well. Also, the government is not really interested in at all solving these problems. Um, it's, it's not the same now in the capital. It's mostly uh, being like modernized, but in the regions, let's say, and it was a sink like three years ago in Baku as well, if you plug your eyebrows, that means that you're not virgin. And you can only plug your eyebrows if you're a married person, because then you can actually have a sex. So they try to control women, they try to control women's rights. 
and they try to control it as not just her thoughts, ideas, and how she dresses, or if she has if she has her secret eyebrows or not, if her eyebrows are plugged or not, if she wears makeup or not. So everything is controlled, and the government is the government really likes this idea because it's a, it's a patriarchal idea, and that means that you have a head like your father or your brother or someone is in charge in the household. That means the president is in charge of the country. So you can't raise against your father, you can't raise against your, um, your like your brother, also you can't go against your president. It has the same meaning. And for that reason, they try to keep the woman outside of politics, they try to keep the woman in the, in the system. This is one of the pictures. It's, I call it to be a woman in Azerbaijan. It's a trans woman who has a head injury. Um, it happened in 2021, uh, June. And there's actually a lot of injuries, there's a lot of stuff, but I thought this picture is less uh, disturbing, even though it's kind of disturbing. It's because it's just, just happened because she's a trans woman. That, that was only the explanation for it. And there is, um, from the before slide, there is this news. Judge murders wife in, in Baku. And there is also was a news about the policeman murdering his wife in a police station. So his wife complained about uh, the husband, who, who was police, to the police, uh, the emergency number, and said that they, you know, he's beating me, I mean, I am afraid that he's gonna kill me, and his teacher and they call her to come to the police office, to the police station, to complain. At the same time, they tell about it to her husband, and her husband just comes to the police station and um, kills her, basically, for complaining. Because, you know, she think, he thinks that this is humiliating him. Because she, she goes against him, which is like, it's going against the patriarchy, which is against the norms that we have. We take a lot of cases, as of this moment, and some of them we actually have a close link, um, and we try to adv uh, try to advocate about them. Uh, in in one case that we had, not all of them finishes like that, but it's a bad example uh, in that sense. But it also shows how much reluctant is the government towards this kind of domestic violence cases. In one case we had, there was a woman um, called Sevinch, and she was being beaten by her husband, also she doesn't have any citizenship. So when she, she was born, the, her parents decided not to get a citizenship because it doesn't matter. Because she's just gonna stay in the household, then she's just gonna marry. That's all, like why she needs the citizenship. We got her a citizenship, we complained about the, her husband. The problem was we couldn't get her children from the husband. And uh, as you could see, the police is not helping at all. Because you have the same policeman who are doing the, who, who are committing the domestic violences. So you, when you go to them, who are not trained about these cases, who are the actually perpetrators in their households, when you go to them, they're not gonna investigate the case. And when you go to the higher courts as well, you have the judges who murders their wife. They're also not gonna investigate the cases. There's a high number of judges are men. That influences the cases a lot. And at the end, she, she returned back to her husband because you can't stop them. It's very hard to work with domestic violence victims when you're just a movement because you don't have anything on your hand. Because you're a movement that can't be registered. And also you're a movement that is all the time arrested or detained by the police. And when you go to the police, it's very hard to do something. She went back to her husband and she was stabbed for 15 times after a month. And that's how it ended. The, the second thing is, on her case, Camille's example, we wanted to send her to a shelter. Azerbaijan has a population of 10 million people, which is the same as Sweden. It's a smaller country, but it has the same population. And we only have two shelters. And those shelters doesn't accept trans women. They accept only women. And also, in these seven cases, we received the recordings from the shelter. So we received that recording by her husband sending the voice message to her mother. On the recording it says that when the husband, the perpetrator, called the shelter, 
shelter gave all the information about her, like when she came to the shelter, when she left the shelter, and etc. Which you can't, you can't say. But then if you do that, then the husband is just going to wait in front of the shelter. When you go out, he's just going to kidnap you. As a moment, we can't also open the shelters because you have to register the shelters. We can't register the shelters. We can't get a permission from the government. And also, if you have a shelter, we did try to uh, to do shelters. We rented some houses and etc. But then when the police comes to your door, it's very difficult situation that we also face. And it's very hard to just to have it. Because if you have a shelter, you have to have a security. If you have a shelter, you have to sustain these people. Also, you have to sustain them after the shelter, which is very important. That we try to do individually. We have the volunteers, like a members, that we work with. Um, so we, if we receive a domestic violence cases, we try to relocate the victim in a different space, not a shelter. Let's say, sometimes they stay with me. Sometimes they stay with another member. And we have different people. Like We have a psychologist in our moment that gives a psychological therapy free. Uh, we have the, another lawyer who works on her domestic violence cases. We have the activist who goes with her. We do a lot of crowdfunding as well. We have a lot of um, people who really care what we say. We do have a, this kind of a respect in the society. Not, in, in a case, not respected, also respected, because they really care and they really see that our work is effective. So we do a lot of crowdfunding, which is very hard to do to do a crowdfunding in Azerbaijan. People are not likely to donate uh, unless you are like severely ill or something. But we do crowdfunding, we receive money, we take them to hospitals, we do checkups, uh, we take them to the expert opinion for the house and etc. And we try to then send these people to get some kind of trainings because those people are just spent all their life in the household and they don't have any kind of abilities. Like we send them to learn I don't know, bendings, we send them to learn about the nail uh, manicures or pedicures and etc. This kind of job that is easy to learn and then they can continue their life and take care of their families afterwards because it's very hard to take care of them all their life. We don't have enough resources on that matter. And we, the, the, usually we try to get money from, from the crowdfunding because in Azerbaijan uh, our member, movement members can't open a bank account. Uh, if we do, we can't receive our money, it's very limited, it's over surveillance, so we can't receive any grants from abroad. That makes it very difficult, like we can't fund our projects by abroad. It's a very difficult situation on that matter. So we do try to rely on crowdfunding, which is just people that send their money, that government can't do anything about that as well. So what else we do? Uh, this is our pictures, like from different things. We try to do everything that is possible by our hands. So we vandalize police stations, which is really nice, interesting. Uh, we put um, um, uh, tombs, the graves, stuff. I did forget the name, sorry. Um, in front of the internal uh, Ministry of Internal Affairs, we put the names of the domestic violence victims. Um, to, we, all, all, we all the time try to hold some kind of rally some kind of small or big or something, because it's very important. Like, we have the silent sounds, and we just have the posters that says the femicide is political, and we just stay silently without any word and without saying. Um, we also hold the big ones, like the big rallies that a lot of people join, and we try to march, because it's March, it also means marching, which is a nice combination. Uh, we have a YouTube page, it's called Fem Utopia. We do the, we hold the conversations here with different people. We do the interviews on the street. Um, we do a lot of book reviews, famous book reviews. We translate books. We do the famous uh, movie reviews. Uh, we, we even sew masks, purple masks, for the rally, so we can all have the purple masks, which is very nice. Uh, we hold the concerts. We first have it without telling anyone. We just. Um, we just, we, we just video record it, then stream it online on the internet. Because we can't do it while the government is knowing that we are doing that. So it's very important to do it in that way. We also have clips, musical clips. Uh, the words and music is, belongs to us. Uh, we try to, like if someone comes, come, but they can watch our YouTube page. They can learn stuff as well, which is 
it's also nice. Uh, we do touch a lot of stuff. We do touch a lot of primary storms, and we touch a lot of the current problems. We ridicule MPs uh, because um, they are elected, not elected, appoint, actually elected, but appointed by the government. So they do what the government wants them to do, basically. So we try to do a lot of stuff, and we hold big rallies. That um, at most, like I would say, 80 or 90, I don't know, 100 people comes. Um, not a lot of people, but it's a lot for Azerbaijani numbers because, as I said, no one actually can hold that in Azerbaijan. It's very difficult. Um, we have a very big parties that, that only hold rallies in a place that the government allows them to do. But the rally is, is a way to make a noise. You hold a rally because you have a problem, you went to the government and the government doesn't want to solve your problem and you, then you hold a rally to make noise. You want to make noise to inform everyone in the country that you have a problem and needs to be solved. So that's why our rallies need to be in the city center, which no, that's not what the government wants. Even though all the rallies don't get any permission, like there is no permission because they don't get permission at all. Sometimes they tell us to do to hold them outside of the city, so no one will see us in a football stadium, which is like most like put you in a, like a cage or something and just scream there. No, that's not for us. We have to be in the city center, and that's what we do. We, we are in the city center and we are holding rallies since 2019. Even though they arrest us, we put pictures. And the police machines, and that's me, by the way. <laughs> um, so we do a lot of stuff. So we have these big banners in the buildings. We spend a lot of time before planning um, because when we make a lot of noise, which is very important for us, because as you, as we all know, social media changes every day. There's news are changing every day. Um, one day they're talking about domestic violence cases. Next day it's going to be I don't know animal rights or some kind of banner or someone burning a flag. Everything, but if we don't want it to change, we just want it to be about domestic violence. Because that's important, because people deny domestic violence. But when you see every day a domestic violence case, a domestic violence case, there's a rally, domestic violence case, and etc. We hold their names, we hold the victims' names on our hand, then they realize that, yes, it's a problem. Now, domestic violence case is the one of the hot topic in Azerbaijan, and it's discussed every day. We don't want it to be silence. We want it to be news all the time. So sometimes we hold rallies like that, that we plan and that everyone knows. And sometimes we just wanted to, put, to keep it on media and we hold the ones that are no one knows, just we know, the who is organizer teams that we do. The feminist movement has no hierarchy. So we don't have any leader. We have people, whoever wants to join can join organize stuff, whoever doesn't want to join, they just don't want to join. And they will do something else. Like if you don't want to do rally, you can do lectures, go to book reviews, and etc. There's jobs for everyone. Like everyone can do anything. It's not paid. So we are powered, powered by the ideology, which is very different by a lot of moments in Azerbaijan that are powered by the by becoming a president or something. We don't have any kind of this thing. We don't want we don't want anything from the like we don't want to be a president. We don't want any kind of um, ranking or anything from the government. We just want to be taken seriously, basically. So it's ideologically powered, and there is no political aim like that. Which is nice, but sometimes, which happened last year, which always happens, by the way, but last year was the worst. We had a lot of arrests. We had. We were about 50, 60 people. It's actually more than that, but I saw a lot of people being very afraid. And all of us were arrested. Because we had more than 600 policemen waiting for us in the city center. And one can take three of us, because they're big. I mean, you know, they're just trained for that. Um, yeah, so we all arrested, basically. Um, and then we had a lot of problems in the police station as well because they were trying to humiliate it. There is a distinct that people, the government spreads among people and also tells the policemen. They treat us as a prostitute. They, because you're a feminist, that means that you're a prostitute. So they keep this the same meaning, in a sense, and that results a lot of sexual harassment by policemen when you're detained. 
um, let's try they try to discourage us when you go to the YouTube pages, when you go to the, these news resources, which is maybe it's not free in Azerbaijan, they only exist on Facebook or on YouTube because the government can't ban them because they have to ban the whole thing. So when you go to this kind of YouTube or the Facebook pages, I'm going to see all these bot comments from the government and they're going to be like, these prestigious blah, 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 and like that. Uh, try to discourage us doesn't help at all. We always try to do what we can. And actually this year, just uh, three hours ago, we hold the, our rally for today, which was actually very successful. And I'm gonna show the video from there. So this is our rally. Very different from the last year. And you see a lot of police. It's everywhere. And there's a lot of police in civil uniforms. So it's not only about police uniforms. <laughs> Nice. We don't want that much police to escort us. It's meaningless. But like compared to the West, I guess they are learning that they can't stop us. That's what I would say. Yeah. By the way, uh, women policemen were brought. It wasn't a thing before. They're there because of us. They're employed because of us. <laughs> because we were complaining a lot for men touching us that we don't want that to happen. Because sometimes when we have the these clothes that have a signs, they force us to take our remove our clothes in the police station, uh, which is not a nice thing. So we complained a lot to the international organizations and the courts, and then employ they employed the women police forces. That's first time, which is also very interesting and what we demand which is very important you have a movement you do stuff you help on the domestic violence cases you take them yeah, and you have all the system but we want something from the government and you have to have the specific detailed things that you want to have which is very important so what from this movement demand from the government the only thing we demand is from the government we don't demand anything some people come to the rally, they have a problem with their father or their brothers or anything, they demand from that. But the, the most of them is women demand from the government. What we demand from the government is we want Istanbul Convention to be ratified by Azerbaijan. Istanbul Convention is a convention about the domestic violence cases. The main difference of this convention is this convention requires the schools have the subject like um, gender as a social construct, about people's gender uh, identities or sexual orientation. So those things have to be taught in school. Istanbul Convention requires the governments to immediately per detain a perpetrator. When the victim calls you, you need to immediately detain a perpetrator. Because in Azerbaijan, we have cases that when the victim goes to the police station and even have the political, uh, the, the, not the political, protection order from the police, for the perpetrator, when the perpetrator is not detained, we have the cases that they stab their wife, they fight their wife, you have to detain them. Even if you don't know if the victim is right or not, you still have to detain them to see the problem. Because this, the second that perpetrator, the perpetrator knows that the victim went to, to complain, it's enough for them to just stab them or kill them or whatever they do, torture them and etc. Second, uh, secondly, Istanbul Convention forces the government to, to give psychological therapy sessions for the perpetrator. So you just don't arrest it only, but you also try to solve the problem. To, see what, to give like, psycho psychological therapies, to appoint people, to have the diagnosis, and etc. And also, Istanbul Convention forces the government to pay for the forces the perpetrator to pay, and if the per per perpetrator can't pay it, the government must pay for the domestic violence health issues, the domestic violence victims' health issues, like the hospital bills, and etc. Also, it forces the government to, um, to, have, um, to collaborate with NGOs and the media. Media plays a lot of role, especially in Azerbaijan when the media is not free at all, and it's all governed by the government. We have soap operas that 
actually glamorize the domestic violence, glamorize the rape, glamorize killing the rape victims. We have the TV programs that are uh, also glamorize all the things and just tries to blame the domestic violent victims. Like you have a domestic violent victim, ex instead of asking the right questions, they ask, why did you marry him? That's your fault. You did it. You were like that. You know, the, 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 the things that they try to blame the victim. The victim is the problem, not the perpetrator. Victim is the problem, not the police that didn't investigate the cases. So media also plays a lot of role on people's mind. And that also forces the government to work with the media, to analyze the media, and also work with the independent NGOs. We want the government to ratify the Istanbul Convention. Also, we want the government to have trained policemen to work on domestic violence cases, to have the psychological test for those policemen, to see actually, can they actually work in domestic violence cases? We had one case where the 17-year-old uh, Gold committed suicide. And he had this text with her friends, and it was saying that uh, I was talking to my dad, and my dad told me that I can kill you and just pay the police 50,000, I don't know, dollar, then I just cover the murder. And there's also policemen in some cases that we have, they actually beat their daughters or their wife, or etc. So we have the police involvement, police corruption involvement, and all the things that links everything together and just results in these cases. Because the country is not free, as you saw. It's the same level as China. <laughs> it's very difficult to go to police and demand for your rights. We want police to investigate cases. We have these cases that I was working on. So Azerbaijan, um, before it was before Instagram, now it's Telegram. They open the channels, and in these channels you have a lot of men. And these channels mostly, uh, their admins are policemen or something else. like like someone that's close to the policeman and they post like let's say our sex tapes, the activist sex tapes or try when they spread the sex tape they also publish there they also publish the like if you're not like, let's say I'm not a politician let's say I have a boyfriend that I spent sent nude pictures they also publish them there in in one case there was a woman who was changing her clothes in a fitting room in a in a shop they also publish that. And when we complain about it, police is like, you know, I can't find that person. You can't find that person. That person has a number. Before the rallies, we as organizing team, we have to hide, like days before, so police wouldn't kidnap us before the rally. So if you kidnap the organizers, you don't have kind of a people who knows what to do. Then you just don't have the rally, kind of puzzles people. So they try to kidnap us. They can easily find us. We have to hide, we have to abandon everything, the telephones, our parents, our friends, we go hiding, we disguise, etc. They spend a lot of time to find us, but they can't find the one number that controls that telegram page. And we have a lot of cases like that, that then we then send to local courts, there's still no result, and we have to send to European Court of Human Rights. And I have this, this there is a, this word that's called late justice is not justice that you receive a case, uh, you receive a decision from the European Court of Human Rights in 10 years. Like in, in, in a best case in three years. Um, and that means that it's a late justice. Your pictures are everywhere. And you're just a girl who just, I don't know, just maybe send a new picture or just change her clothes in a shop in a fitting room. That is what she's supposed to do, but that's what happens. We want police to be trained in the domestic violence cases have a special domestic violence force, uh, like a domestic violence case force, you know, every police station. And Azerbaijan government has a lot of police forces. It's a police controlled country. So when you go to the city center, you can see a lot of police around the city. Like police in civil uniform, police in police uniform, a lot of soldiers. So it's in that sense, it's very safe because it's everywhere is police. You don't have to call one, just like, I don't know, turn your head or something, but in other case, it's not safe because you are always surveillance. You are ever, they're always watching you, and they know our face. Um, they're trained for that, and etc. So you have all this police that you can actually spare for domestic violence cases, but you don't. That's what I. What, that's what we want as well. We want a lot of shelter shelters. We want us to be able to have a shelter to be registered 
to actually legally be able to participate. We want our lawyers to be accepted to the bar association because they don't accept our lawyers to the bar association. So we want we will have a less lawyers or maybe non-lawyers who works in domestic violence cases. So what we want is basically demands from the government, and that, that's the main thing that interests us. And what we have achieved? That's a good question. We have actually achieved a lot of stuff. Um, we hold rallies this year, which is nice, which you can't actually. Um, that is, and we also achieved to keep the topic on, on media all the time. Now, when police is know when they take a domestic violence cases, and if we hear it, it's gonna be a topic. All the places. It's gonna be that feminists coming to, I don't know, painting your police station in red color. It's gonna be like feminists coming to your door. We do that as well. We go to the perpetrator's house, we go to call police all the time. We have maybe everyone's number in Minister of Internal Affairs because we are calling everyone that we can get the numbers and do everything. And there's a lot of domestic violence cases are taken serious now because there's a fear. Because the people are, because one day you hear the chopped woman's body was found, we try to work on that. The next day you hear, I don't know, um, a minor being raped, etc. We keep all these topics and have a, we try to build the anger in the society. So when the police work on these domestic violence cases, they will have the second thought. Like, they will think that, okay, I have to work on it. I don't have any choice. So we kind of have this monitoring system in that sense. We, of course, it doesn't work in all cases. It's mostly working if they see that. So that's why when we have a case, we really try to put all our efforts on these cases. We try to work on these cases. We try to make them all the time a topic. Old rallies, I don't know, do everything that is possible there, give a lot of interviews even publish them on foreign media, which is everybody in the government doesn't love, like it because they sell oil and gas to Europe and they don't want to have a bad reputation. Um, so they don't like it and we try to do as much as we can. So that's all from me. I mean, if anyone have a question, I can have them. <laughs>